Hello everybody. So today I got a special episode for you guys. I've got a brand new machine here and I figured I'd take you guys along and show you how to set up uh, an environment from scratch. Hopefully some of you find this a little bit useful of some sort. Um, you know, Mac, I have to admit, is a lot easier than Windows uh, to set up a nice environment. So we're going to be running through the steps for this. Um, up until this point, I've been using my, my laptop to do all the videos, but now I'm going to have a dedicated desktop just for this. So I'm excited to get started. So let's get right to it. Um, let's pull open Chrome. And the very first thing we're going to pull in is Homebrew. Now, if you're not familiar with Homebrew, Homebrew is basically the NPM version or Composer version of Apple software. Um, and it's a nice piece of software that allows us to install and pull in all, all the different packages that we're going to need. And it is quite simple to use um, and really easy to install. Really, all you have to do is just copy this onto your um, terminal. So let's go ahead and pull that up now. This is my terminal. Obviously, there's nothing installed on this machine just yet, so this is very, very fresh. So let's go ahead and paste that command in and hit install. Go ahead. Um, now, command line tools, if you guys are not familiar, Apple a little while back actually removed them from, from Xcode and it became its own package. And it's used to be able to compile code and stuff like that. So that's a nice little little thing that Apple did there. So while that's going there, now some of you, if you've been following my videos, you know that I actually use um, iTerm as my terminal. So let's go ahead and pull that in as well. Nothing wrong with this terminal. Um, some of you have asked me sort of what, why do you use iTerm over this? Really, honestly, there, there isn't a whole lot of difference between them. Um, the reason why I use iTerm is one very simple reason. Actually, there's a small little shortcut, um, keyboard shortcut that you can add that will actually allow you to pull up the terminal from anywhere and it's very very useful and that's really the reason why I use it um, it does a lot other cool stuff as well uh, but to be honest I keep it fairly simple so let's go ahead and pull that open if you have any questions or anything go ahead and drop them in the chat I'll, I'll be checking that periodically I'm getting a resolution max of 480p. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It should be 720. All right, so let's pull open. So actually, let's copy that onto applications, and let's pull that open. Let's see where to go. Yep, I do want to open it. All right, and there we go. So this is iTerm as it comes out of the box. So this is still downloading down here. It might take a little while there. I do remember Homebrew takes quite a bit. Now, guys, I haven't done this in a while, so you know, we may stumble around here a little bit, but I think you'll find something useful out of it. All right, so while that's installing there, what else do you want? Um, all right, so we've also talked about Code Editor. Let me drink a little water here. So for my Code Editor, I use PHP Storm, um, mainly because it's an IDE, right? It's a full-fledged uh, IDE, but I understand that PHP Storm is quite expensive, you know, for a single piece of software. And it's not like you can really buy it. You kind of have to subscribe to it. And um, I switched over about three years ago to PHP Storm. I haven't really looked back. I, I still pull open Sublime Text from time to time because Sublime Text is just a text editor. So if I have a single file that I need to edit or anything like that, it is nice to have that very fast um, Sublime Text to do that. But um, I'll go ahead and download uh, PHP Storm. If you do want to try it, they do offer a 30-day trial. You can go ahead and give it a go. All right, so while that's downloading, as an alternative, uh, VS Code would be what I would recommend. It's available for Mac, Ubuntu, Windows, every basically just about every system. It's a Microsoft product, believe it or not. Microsoft has done huge 180 when it comes to open source community, and obviously they bought GitHub a while back, and you know, so 
if you are using uh, VS Code, you should get the what is it? Intel Sense, I think it's called VS Code. Let's find out. Let's pull it open here. Yeah. So Intel Sense for Visual Studio Code. So this will actually bring in a lot of the IDE functionality uh, to PHP. Um, and it's really nice. So you would download this and, and basically add your language. So you get the PHP extension pack. So obviously for Laravel and all that stuff that we're doing in, on the channel. Alright, so it looks like PHP Storm is done. But still installing that back there. Go ahead and pop this open. Another nice feature with uh, PHP Storm that I really enjoy is when you have multiple machines. It actually does a repo for your settings. So if you make some changes, ch you change your font size or something like that on one machine, you actually could do the exact same thing on the other machine. All you have to do is pull down the changes um, from your from your repo. So it's pretty cool the way that it keeps all of your environments synced together. Because if, if not, what happens is you change your theme on one, but then you go to the next machine and you need to go ahead and, and redo that. So that's that's no fun. Thanks for the comments, Sam. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep those coming. Um, we're obviously working on the View series right now. I've been down for a little bit. I was sick for a little while. And then um, I've been trying to get this machine together. And it's, you know, life has happened. And I haven't got a chance to upload some new videos. But we definitely got more coming. We also have our library project that we haven't finished up with. But, yeah, a lot of, a lot of cool content coming in. Now that I'm going to have this machine um, just dedicated for this. It's going to be a little bit easier to just sit down and knock out a quick video. Now, this live stream stuff, I mean, I've, I've really been interested in kind of getting into it. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy this and we could do some more of that um, in the near future. So, one of those. But, thanks for the comment. All right. So, let's see. What do we have here? PHP Storm should be here. There we go. Uh, so, let's pop PHP Storm open just to see what it does. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, PHP Storm is awesome. I used Sublime Text for a long time. Sublime Text is just so fast. It is such a fast editor. I mean, I'm not sure <laughs> what the developers do for that software, but it is so fast, and everything on it is so crisp, and it feels really, really good. PHP Storm is, in comparison, it's not sluggish, I, I wouldn't say, but PHP Storm is a little slower. It's a little big software, and actually, I've been having an issue lately um, where it's almost like it doesn't like Adobe Creative Suite software. So whenever I have Photoshop open, my PHP Storm is just crawls. I mean, it is so slow, I barely can use it. So that is kind of a pain. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. All right, so where is PHP Storm here? There we go. It's still opening. All right, so config or installation. Now let's not import any settings. I'll show you how to pull up that that settings repo. And if you guys want to use my actual settings, or if you wanted to even just get them as a starting point, uh, GitHub.com. Let's see. Let me go to my my personal code repo here. And let's see, where is it at? Right here. PHP Storm Settings. So here's the address for that. So this is what it does. It's And this is, uh, I made it public. You don't have to make it public. I made it public to share with you guys. So this is all it does. I mean, every time you, you quit, if you see here, this is my other machine. And all it does is it dumps all of your different settings right into a repo. And so now that I have this fresh installation here, we're just going to skip remaining because I'm actually going to pull open my settings file. But now, single machine, and I can get that. Let me go ahead and log in here. All right, let's see. I think it's that. Let's find out. Yep, there we go. All right, so yeah, now that um, now that I have this machine, it's brand new to scratch. It's really useful to have those PHP Storm settings right there ready to go because it'll, it'll pull them right up. So the way you do that is you go up here. I guess you got to have a, a project open. That's strange. I guess let's create a new project. 
Yeah, an empty project would be fine. Yeah, it's not showing me the menu up here to pull up in the settings. Let's see. Let's let's open it up. There we go. All right, so let's go to file. And I believe settings repo right here. And so you can pull that open. Let's close the tip. There we go. Looks like put it behind or something. All right, so upstream URL. I believe all you need here would be. This is a pain. This window is kind of stuck there. Uh, let's see here. You would go here to clone. And I believe if you copy this, that's what it needs in here. And let's overwrite local. And there we go. Settings synced. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool that the way it does that. All right. So let's go ahead and close PHP Storm. I don't need it right now. Just wanted to make sure I had that set up. I definitely have an SSD in all my machines. Um, it's not that. <laughs> I got some some pretty quick machines. They're pretty slow machines too. I got I got a couple of them. But even now, actually, the laptop runs great with PHP Storm. It's just about something about some pieces of software that maybe they just take over the UI in a particular way, and it really messes up with PHP Storm. All right, so brew is done, and we can test that by just simply running brew. And I will actually switch over to iTerm now. So let me go ahead and close terminal. Let's go to iTerm. And actually, we're going to have to restart it because there's a new software there. So iTerm. Sure, check automatically. All right, so brew, is that working here? Don't really have any plans right now for an upcoming uh, Laravel series, uh, but you know, I'm always looking for feedback from you guys and on what you'd like to see. Um, right now, again, we're working on that view project and the, the view lessons. There's a lot more to view um, than that, so not sure how many episodes we'll end up with with view. Um, I, to be honest, you you don't need a ton of view to really get some powerful stuff going. That's what I love so much about it. So not sure what we're gonna do next. Hello from Russia. <laughs> welcome, welcome. All right, let's see. So we are what? What do we want? Uh, da, 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 what do we want to pull in first? So macOS actually ships with a version of PHP, and it's 7.1, so it's not too bad. It used to be version five, which is very bad. But if we do a uh, brew search PHP, so obviously PHP 7.2 or 7.3 is what I'm looking for, and they have that just as PHP. So the way that they work this is if you want an older version. They kind of do this at 7.1 or at 7.2. But then I believe that just PHP will actually be 7.3. So we could say brew install. This is why this is so awesome. It's so easy to manage all your packages. So we'll brew install PHP. And let's see how fast it'll want to go here. By the way, I didn't really mention it. I am running uh, Mojave. Um, Mac OS so this is the latest version should be 10 14.5 so react I know a lot of you have asked about about React. Um, well, you know, I don't use React on an everyday basis. I did quite a bit of React Native um, to, you know, the, the one that does the iOS apps and the Android apps and stuff like that. And, but to be honest, I mean, I don't use it in my everyday uh, workflow. So it would be difficult for me to do a, a React course that isn't just the very basics of React, you know, and I, and I feel like there's a lot of that already. You know, if you if you wanted the very basics of, of a piece of software, you know, in an hour, uh, you know, there's literally a trillion different versions of it on YouTube. And, you know, I don't, I don't, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't feel like I have this advanced knowledge and over that domain and there's way more qualified folks out there to do something like react again I, I just don't nothing against it I just I use view so you know I don't I don't have that full-blown knowledge Well, about issues with Laravel Valet, I guess we're about to find out. I don't know. Um, I don't believe we'll have any issues. Um, I guess we'll we'll find out when we get there. To be honest, there's no script here or anything. We're we're just going as we go. So, yeah, hopefully we don't run into any issues with Valet because I have to have Valet. <laughs> I can't work without that. Um, hello from Ethiopia. Hello from <laughs> from the United States. So this is taking uh, quite a bit of time. So keep those questions coming as we're waiting for this to finish up. Hello, Germany. We're doing good. We're doing good. Thanks to all you guys for joining in. I'm glad you're you're here. So we'll hopefully we'll learn something. And hopefully Valet works, I guess. <laughs> Let me see if I can move this. Hang on one second, you guys. Let's see. I'm trying to fit my other screen. So which MacBook is better? Um, I'm not sure. I've got a, I've got a MacBook, um, just a MacBook, uh, the black one. It's got a, I think it's a, I don't know what processor on it actually. It's one of those really, really thin ones. It's really nice, really light. It's a 13 inch. I love it. I, it, it works great for that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, obviously the one that you can afford, I guess. I mean, apples have gotten quite pricey, so, you know, they do jump up there quite a bit in money. Obviously, the bigger one you could buy, the, the better off you're going to be. You do find that, you know, when you buy sort of the, the top model, you're going to use it for a longer time. You know, when you buy the, the lower model, you're going to have to upgrade a little quicker. Thank you, thank you. Believe it or not, this PHP install is still going. My goodness, this is taking a long, long time. Let's see what else we could do in the meantime. So what else would I want to pull in? Well, I need Composer for everything else. Um, let me think, what else do I use on every day? Oh, SQL Pro. So this is another one of those uh, PHP Storm VS Code type of things. So SQL Pro is awesome for MySQL databases. I used this for a long time. I really enjoy it. Recently, I purchased a license to Table Plus, and I've been kind of using that in some of the videos. So the advantage here with, with Table Plus that I find extremely useful is not necessarily for development, but when you're managing your production servers and your data is live and you've got you know real users looking at it, Whenever you make changes to your database in Table Plus, it will basically cache all of those queries, and then you hit save, and it will actually apply all the queries all at once. 
So that's really, really useful because if you're changing, figure you're changing a table and another table also needs to change in order for that, that change to actually work, you know, like a foreign key or something like that. If you're using SQL Pro and you change it, then any users that request that page in the meantime while you're changing the two tables is probably going to get an error. So that's in production and, and, you know, when you have a lot of users, obviously, uh, you don't really want to do that to your users. So Table Plus it's nice for that. But SQL Pro is free. And SQL Pro, I mean, donate to them if, if you'd like. Uh, but, yeah, SQL Pro works really well. I love it for, you know, just for local development. It is a little buggy, though. Um, a lot of times it will just quit or be slow for no reason. You just have to kind of work around its, its quirks. I'm going to read through some of your comments here. Bear with me. Yeah, we could do a PHP Storm tutorial. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, we can we can take a look at PHP Storm too. Um, again, what I feel with PHP Storm is sort of the same thing that I feel with Table Plus. It's it's difficult to to do some tutorials on a on a piece of software that costs money, you know, because not everybody's going to have access to it. So it really limits who can use it. So that's finally this thing is done. Ooh, we that took forever. All right, so let's pop open SQL Pro just to make sure this is running. So the next thing I need here is let's do brew, um, do brew search MariaDB. I'm gonna need some sort of MySQL. It should be just MariaDB, I believe. Yes, it is. All right, so brew install MariaDB. MariaDB is just a direct drop-in replacement for MySQL. Is it good practice to develop a site using modular-based approach using third-party packages like N Wizard? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is, to be honest. But if by modular approach you mean basically pulling in packages through Composer, then yes, a hundred percent. You know, I used to be of the thought that I wanted to write every piece of code, every line of code for every single one of my applications, but the reality is that as a single or solo developer, even a small team developer, it's just not realistic. I mean, it's it's almost impossible for you to code everything from scratch. It's going to it's going to take a lot longer, so your projects are going to feel way longer and if you have customer work, they want their their applications as, as soon as possible. So, it's not great practice to do that. And to be honest, I mean, at this point there's so much good software out there that's free and open source and there's really no reason for you to reinvent the wheel per se um, with something like login or authentication or something like that so no th this stream um, kinda talked about it up front but yeah this machine uh, it's not a reset it's a new machine that I'm dedicating to doing the videos so I've, I'm just bringing everybody along, see this live, and hopefully some of you can get some something out of it. All right, so we're going to do a socket here. Localhost should be root. Password should be empty. Test connection. Nope, still not working. Uh, let's see. Uh, should be able to do... Can't connect. All right, so we'll have to check to see why that's not working. But it did pull in MariaDB. All right, so up next, uh, we need Composer. A composer, of course, we've talked about Composer before. Um, I think it's getcomposer.org. Let's see. So Composer, of course, dependency injection, uh, I'm sorry, dependency manager for PHP. Really easy to pull in. You just copy these lines and bring it in. Now, what's a little tricky and, and I feel like trips up some folks is this. So right now I installed it, but if I run Composer, it doesn't work. It says I, I can't find it. So I believe here in the instructions, I actually haven't looked at this in a while. If we go to documentation, let's see, introduction. Ah, of course, we've got to start the service. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yep. Sometimes you forget the basics, right? All right, so let's see. Let's find where... 
So Linux, Unix, and Mac OS locally, globally. So there it is. So what it wants you to do is move this composer, that far file, into your bin directory. That way it's accessible. I uh, didn't want it, didn't like it. Let's see what happened here. Not sure what happened here. Let's see. So do we have that available now? Let's see. Yes, we do. So that simple line here, this will trip a lot of folks up when they're installing Composer for the first time. They expect to just be able to run Composer and it just works and it just doesn't um, right away. So make sure that you move your Composer, that FAR file, into basically your executables. All right, so we got Composer. So why don't we bring in Laravel uh, Valet? since some of you have had some issues with Mojave. Hopefully we don't have any issues. I really need Valet. So let's see, it should be just a composer. Where is it? There we go. So composer, composer global required. Now we don't use global a lot. So just bear in mind, composer actually has, and I don't know if you guys know this, so if we CD into my user directory, there's actually a composer directory in there. Um, you can open it up and find it here so you can see it. So we are inside the my users account, and there's a hidden folder called composer. So there's a global composer uh, directory here, and once we do that composer, composer global, we'll actually add a configuration file here. And so these are packages that run basically in your entire machine. Let's go ahead and pull that in now. If you notice here, it actually pulled me into this composer. And there it is. So we have a composer.json file right there. And so that's that's when you do the global. Again, to find that, it's under your user, but it is hidden. So you're not going to be able to just pull that open. So you have to go through the terminal and you can CD into it. And then if you do open space period on Mac, it actually pulls it open in Finder. I don't know if you guys know that trick. I'm not sure what you mean, Ashley, about the DB connection part. Like, uh, are you talking about getting your projects to read the database? I'm not sure if you want to specify. We can we can look into it. How difficult is it for Russian self-taught school student to move in with you? Well, I don't, I'm not sure that that's going to happen. <laughs> All right, so do we have valet now? We don't. So this is another one of those things. So Composer has its own, um, its own uh, vendor bins directory, and there's valet. So right off the bat, you can't run just valet, right? You have to add this bin directory to basically your your path so the beer station name is I've gone to homestead instead all right I'm still not 100% what you mean all right so let's figure this out here for a second so again the we're talking about the bin directory for composer. This needs to be put in your in your path. And if you echo dollar sign path, you see right now we don't have our composer bin path anywhere in here. So I think by default, actually I'm not sure on the Mac by default where it puts it. So let's go to my user directory and let's list all the files here. So we can use, let's see what it's pulling in. Doesn't look like it's even there bash session so there is no bash rc or anything like that on here being pulled in yeah i'm not sure i'll have to see let's see here let's do a quick google search uh composer bin add to path i don't remember i use a bash rc file which we haven't pulled it in yet so the bin directory so yeah bash profile 
but it's not there so maybe we'll just create it then that's what I figured it was so then let's add a new bash underscore is it bash RC no bash profile there we go so in here we could just simply export and then we're gonna have need the path let's see here home vendor bin and then the path yeah so that'll do it and then we're gonna need close that up now I'm gonna have to restart this I term and with any luck we should be able to run valet now let's find out yep so there we go so that fixes that um, so just to recreate the steps here um, in your user directory right and you can get to your user directory just using the tilde um, you're gonna have obviously this directory and in it you're gonna have to create a bash profile and if you're using oh my C shell or something like that obviously it'll be bash RC so oh, looks like Simon had already told me it was bash profile <laughs> Uh, so if we vim into bash profile then we could do what we could do here is we're exporting path and path you can basically concatenate as many strings as you want to path you can have as many of these as you need so what you do is you add what you need to add to it and then you do this um, dollar sign path variable so it will concatenate all of the strings together as opposed to replace them if you don't add that in then you basically lose everything that you already had in your path and to confirm that you can always echo out path right and that will give you so we have composer and valet and everything so another thing I do um, is in my user directory um, inside my documents so CD into documents I just make a code directory so let's just create that in the most most of the time the reason why I actually do this is because you want to valet install and you want to tell it to go to a specific directory so if you keep all of your files in one directory it helps a lot when it comes to getting valet to start Alright, so it looks like it's working there. Restarting PHP. I didn't even check what PHP version Brew uh, pulled in, so we'll, we'll go ahead and check that now. So it looks like we need DNS mask, so it'll pull it in. We didn't even have Nginx. Now notice how I didn't install any of this stuff. We're just kind of letting Valet handle a lot of the setup. So that's uh, another kind of side benefit of Laravel Valet which I don't know if you guys knew about but when you pull it in it'll basically pull in a lot of packages that maybe you didn't know you needed so that's that's a nice thing alright so Valet is installed so if we run Valet again I believe you have to say park yeah so when you run Valet park it registers the current working directory with Valet so that is what it's gonna use to be able to pull up the sites so let's do valet park and so now that's been there now let's go ahead and just make a very quick uh, test project here we'll just call it I don't know maybe live CD live let's go ahead and vim just a index.php file nothing crazy here I just wanna echo working So if everything's working good, we should be able to basically go to this directory name dot test and it should just work. And sure enough, so Laravel is working, so that's great news for Mojave. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um Laravel versus Symphony. So you're right, Laravel is a Laravel is a basically a in its early stages, it, it is a wrapper around Symphony. But if you've ever tried to use any of the Symphony components, you'll find they are extremely, extremely good um, and powerful. But they are not very developer friendly. Um, recently, I've been doing a lot of um, crawlers, 
like DOM crawler, uh, using the DOM crawler component, where basically you go to a site and you scrape data off of them. And I tell you, that DOM crawler is not an easy piece of software to work with. So I can only imagine if I had to do that every day. So Laravel is just a really good wrapper around Symfony. But that's not all it does. I mean, if you look at a just a Laravel project, I don't have one right now. We'll pull one in now. But if you looked at a Laravel project, you'll see that there's a lot of other packages that are not Symfony packages. So it, it is very opinionated in that it brings in a lot of other packages and it, it does a lot of it does a lot of other things that are that symphony just doesn't do so laravel as you as you know i mean if you guys are looking for something new to learn and, and really want to stay active uh and maybe get a job or stuff like that i laravel is really kind of the the, the not the newcomer on the block but it is the most popular thing out there right now so it, it shouldn't be too difficult to start to find jobs where they require Laravel. All right, so let's go ahead and pull in Laravel installer. That's another um, installer. So I know that you can you can do it through Composer too, like create Laravel projects through Composer. But this Laravel install ins installer is really good, and all it is is just Composer global require. Laravel installer, we'll pull that in. And since we added this bin directory, I think I still have it open here. This is where basically that package is going to end up. And you'll see it'll pull it in here. And that's why we we're able to run Laravel uh, globally in the whole machine. Big project on Laravel. Yeah, we could, we could definitely tackle a big project on Laravel. Um, there's so much to cover. Uh, I, I wish, you know. <laughs> I wish it was a little easier to cover huge projects, but you know, as episodes get really long or just a lot of them, you know, I just see the 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 interest level kind of dying down. So we can definitely tackle something. Um, let's see, Laravel, is that working? Yes. So you see, this is working now. And again, this is because we added that um, that path, right? That's otherwise this wouldn't have worked because all of the Composer global packages end up getting added right here to this bin directory. Again, this is under my user account dot Composer. That's a hidden file vendor bin. So now let's go ahead and CD back and let's create a Laravel project. So let's say Laravel new testing live. How about that? So that's going to craft the Laravel application. It's as easy as that. Uh, once you have this, it'll just pull everything right up. Yeah, big project with testing. That's kind of what we're working on for for the library projects. We're focused on the back end. Eventually, I do have plans of maybe making a counterpart series for the library project where we actually, um, you know, take the the code, the back end code that we wrote for library project, and maybe make a UI for it, um, like API API style, where you you know you're querying the the server and getting back responses and then formatting them. So just to catch everybody up, we are installing a fresh uh, Mac OS uh, development development server. So, not development servers, development environment, right? So we've done every basically every single step. This was a completely fresh installation of Mac OS. So, yeah, check out the the library project. So there's uh there's six episodes of it now. By the way, guys, if you haven't registered, um. We do. I do have the coderstape.com site. Let's see a pull up here. So this, I mean, I find this very useful for me. But YouTube does a not so great job at kind of focusing on series-based uh, postings or, or videos. So what I've done is I've kind of put them all together in this site so that you you have all the videos. So yeah, we have five videos uh, for the library project. It's just called Test Driven Laravel. And the nice thing with this is too, if you register, um, then you can write notes and you can mark them as complete and stuff like that. And I just find that very useful for me, just because I you know again I I don't know what I've watched and YouTube doesn't do a great job of of doing that. Um, 
So, yeah, if you haven't already, go ahead and, and sign up for this. Obviously free, nothing crazy there. But, yeah, check out the test-driven uh, Laravel project. I think you'll enjoy that. Um, it's about two and a half hours long at this point because every episode I try to do it about 30 minutes or so. And it's really, really advanced stuff. So this is a cool project. Um, very difficult to record. I've, I've tackled that project, and every time I, I write an episode, it's it's difficult to to talk about these really advanced concepts and try to make it simple and easy to understand for you guys. So we've got a project going, so that's great. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and do it. So testing-live, and we should be able to just pull that up, dot test. Again, this is because we installed Laravel Valet. And there we go. We're running. It's that simple. I mean, I love I love how simple this this onboarding process is for Laravel uh, when you use the installer and composer and all that stuff. And that's a nice thing there. So now that we have that, well, you know, we're really kind of just just about ready here. Um, not much else to do. I'll pull up my my PHP Storm here. Let me try to open that project now. Just to we talked about databases and stuff like that and the easiest way whenever I'm starting out a project I usually use SQLite it just is fast is there's basically no setup needed whatsoever and I know a lot of you have asked me well why why do you use SQLite and would you use SQLite in production no you would not use SQLite in production a couple of reasons but mainly you wouldn't use it because it doesn't have any authentication it doesn't have any users it doesn't really have the protection that you need for production but SQLite runs just as good and because of eloquent it's really really easy to to swap into a you know Maria DB or MySQL or Redis um, not Redis but any other library basically that you'd want um, really easily so let's go ahead and open up that new project that we just created uh, let's see here documents code whoops did not mean to do that let's try that again testing live there we go let's pull up in this project in this window So I need a token for that. Ah, I don't want to create a token right now. All right, so testing live. So again, there's no database set up for this just yet. It hasn't pulled in my settings. That's why it looks a little funky. But by default, it wants MySQL. But if you're having trouble with this and setting this up locally, just change it out and just, just write SQLite. Um, now to do this you will need to go back to your terminal you're gonna have to create that initial um, initial uh, file yourself so let's go to testing live and then let's just simply I use touch I know some of you have had issues with touch because it doesn't work on PC so but it would be touch you could also do just vim database database dot SQLite So now that we have that file, we can run PHP artisan migrate. And that's it. It's where it's running. You have a database that's working. So SQLite, really simple onboarding process for it. So that's really, really nice. So, all right, guys. Well, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, I'll wait around for another couple of minutes if you have any questions on this. But feel like we've uh, gone quite a bit and gone for about 45 minutes and um, yeah if you have any questions now's the time in the chat and I'll try to get to those if not thanks for watching and uh, we'll be doing a little bit more live streaming um, I do enjoy this format where we can interact back and forth so we'll see what what kind of uses I can come up with uh, to live stream by the way on a, on a software um, question um, I'm using OBS for streaming. Let me see. Where'd it go? It doesn't look like it's there. There we go. So OBS is a software. It's free. OBS Studio. Really nice, um, really nice project to do 
um, you know, to do live streams like this. So cool little cool little software. Uh, yes, the streams get saved in uh, under the the live stream um, folder in YouTube. So yeah, this this will be available. So all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out now. Thanks so much for those of you that uh, stuck around with me, and uh, hopefully you saw some stuff you didn't know and learned some stuff you didn't know. Obviously, drop your questions. I I check those constantly. I'm sure you guys know that. Um, really try to get to your questions because I know how frustrating it is to be stuck on a project and not be able to get past uh, something. And you know, sometimes it's a very simple answer, like, "Hey, did you you know did you import the class?" You know, it's like, "Oh man, of course I forgot that part." You know, so. It's great to be able to to have access to to somebody who knows it. And as a community, you know, if we if we start to answer questions for everybody, you know, go ahead and keep browsing through there. You know, somebody may be struggling with something that you struggle with and figured out in the comments section of the video. So just go ahead and answer the questions, you know, go ahead and try to help everybody out. So that way we all get better. You know, there's no truthfully, we're all figuring it out. You know, there is no. There's no one person that's got every single thing figured out working and perfect. So we all struggle. We all use Google. You know, we all we all do this every day. It's not it's not easy. So for those of you who have stuck around, thanks so much. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.